Hey everybody, Aaron here. Welcome back to another anime review. Today we look at a series known as Shimometa, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist. Now, do you remember, uh, hopefully it came out already, if not, I, I don't know why I didn't put it out yet, but I put out another review of Okusama not that long ago, and I launched that, and I had a giant warning on screen, you know, telling people, hey, listen, if you're not over a certain age, be warned that this is very, very mature. Well, I'm doing that again, because Shim <laughs> Shimonetta is a very mature and very, very sexualized show when it comes to what they talk about. Now, here's the thing. There are some scenes of, you know, very explicit stuff. That's just kind of what this show does. But it's also so scattered that I can't say, like, oh, it's, it's only there once the blue moon. You don't have to worry about it here or there. It, it's scattered. It's always something that's always lurking around the corner, ready to go, oh, what, oh my god, there's a dirty joke. It's This whole show revolves around, I mean, the concept of sex and dirty jokes and, you know, kind of partial nudity. It just, in general, that's what this whole show is about. So, giant warning on screen went up again. Probably goes away now. Now, because, you know, like I said before, I, I can't control people from watching, you know, the show, of course. But I do feel like it's my moral duty as someone who does care about the audience that I, you know, I review to that, you know, hey, listen, you know, if you're young, don't be watching this. If you're, you know, of the age, watch this. If you feel like you're mature enough or your parents think you're mature enough, watch it. I don't care. That's that, you know, that's up to them. That's not up to me. But um, anyways, Shimmeta's story is very basic and it's very interesting. So this is a J Japan where many years in the future, they have noticed that they don't want the, uh, the, the, the world essentially to fall into chaos and they feel like the best way to do that is to stop dirty things from being around in just general so they ban porn they ban uh, dirty magazines they ban dirty jokes they ban people talking about sex and sexual desires and things like that and of course they have to actually also wear these collars that if they talk about stuff like that you know all of a sudden they'll get alerted to the police and, and the police will come down and you know give them sentencing and stuff like that even to the point that, you know, the school students are some places so free from, you know, dirty thoughts and dirty minded jokes and stuff like that. They, they, they have no idea what the hell it is. Like, they see something and they're like, well, what's that? I don't understand. What's so great about this scene right here? I don't know. So, Welcome Socks, which is S-O-X, which, you know, tries to sound like sex, obviously, S-E-X. But Socks is a terrorist organization, I put quotes on terrorist organization, that is trying to make it so the rest of Japan, at least this one specific area for now, starts falling back into the old way of doing things, where they care about sexual desires and care about sexual concepts and stuff like that. And they will do anything lewd and inappropriate to do that. I mean, like even the main girl runs around with panties on her head just because she feels like that's a good expression of herself and expression of what Sox is trying to do. Now, enter uh, Tanukichi Okuma, who he is trying to get away from that because the thing is, is that his father was apparently a very big sexual deviant. It's also very similar to her. She was a, he was a sexual terrorist. It's, you know, I don't know how the hell you could be a sexual terrorist, but um, he gets he get the, uh, his father gets arrested, put into jail, and he's trying to get away from that world and try to go and kind of lead a normal life because he fell in love with this one girl that he met at a younger age. It wants to go to where she's at, which is one of the schools that is almost devoid of anything sexual related. Now, on the first day, though, of course, things happen where it causes him not to be able to really adhere to, you know, get away from those sexual things. And he ends up joining Sox, and, you know, their band of weirdos join and get bigger and bigger as the series progresses. I mean, that's kind of normal for a show like this. But what the focus on this show is, is the comedy, the, the dirty jokes, and just the gags that you see. Oh, my God. There is an overarching story, you know, it, it does have, like, a point-to-point-to-point -point -to -point type thing. But... It's always kind of just meant to be funny and just dirty overall. And I'll tell you right now, this is from someone that I, you know, I typically don't watch a lot of dirty shows. Like, I mean, Okusama, yeah, I watched that recently. That's kind of dirty. But I tend to watch more, you know, down to level age, less like stuff that's like for 15, 16 plus, you know. I tend to watch that more often because anime, you know, t tends to go and kind of adhere to people like that. Not really go to like the 18 plus category. I mean, besides hentai and besides, you know... 
anime porn of all these sorts. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that in terms of like what shows you typically see airing, you know, they're not usually like this. This show clearly wanted to kind of break through the mold and go, you know what? It's okay to talk about, you know, everything under the roof. You know what? By the way, I'll put out another warning because I'm going to talk. I'm going to have to say, maybe I'll put this warning before. So this way it kind of warns you that I'm talking like this. This comes from a girl who talks about, you know, fisting people. This talks about a girl talking about sex. She talks about, you know, thrusting into people. <clears throat> she talks about her pussy. She talks about her dick that she doesn't have, even though she thinks that it'd be freaking awesome to have that. She, you know, <clears throat> expect all of that. Expect all of that from this show. I mean, just the opening alone, she says cock and balls. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Shima Meta in a nutshell. Now... Story-wise, like I said again, it's meant to be funny. It is very funny. You know, it works out. I actually do like the story in this because it gets way better toward the end. And also, here's the thing. I actually like the character build-up. Like, the characters and the, the, the way they design them to, um, you know, kind of mature with one another in, in their own... And, and I say mature also kind of in air quotes because I don't want to say they're really mature. I think they kind of, like, demature by saying half the shit they do, but... You know, it, it kind of shows this this very interesting character progression because almost some of these characters that you think are just this way end up turning almost 360 around on another episode. So don't ever get used to one character acting normal because here's the thing. No one in this fucking show is normal. I'm going to tell you that right now. No one in this show is normal. Now, audio-wise, I watched this in um, English dub. I really loved it. I thought the English dub was really great. Josh Grill as, as Tanuki was awesome. Um, Jamie Mo uh, Marchi was the girl that is Ayame, which is the leader of Sox. Uh, Monica Real, if, if you can't hear that, I'm clapping right now because Monica Real, you you stole the show the show with this. You know, your character has the probably the most interesting shit happen at one point, and just the reactions that she gives and performance wise she gives was fucking amazing. I won't even lie, I loved her character, probably the best character, she's not even the main character technically, she's just like a side character, but she is amazing in this, the, uh, all the voice actresses and actors really did a very good job, I loved it, um, I did not watch the Japanese, uh, you know, actual Japanese for this, I, so I don't know how that sounds in comparison, but I could presume, you know, it's probably okay if you're really into that. Um, music wise, music's very interesting because the opening and closing it reminded me of something from the older anime days, like they're trying to build up this epic story by using very old anime tones and stuff like that. So if you watched anything from the 80s, you kind of know what to expect. Almost reminded, almost reminiscent of the first season of JoJo from what I noticed in terms of how that sounds when the opening is. So kind of expect that with this. It, but it's all dirty jokes in the, in the process. Like, I mean, even how it, it talks about him waking up and getting ready to do blank blank. <laughs> I'll just say that right now. Did I say this is a very mature anime? Yeah, okay. I want to make sure I said that. Uh, Animation-wise, I love the animation. I love the character design. I think all the characters are very cool looking. Um, some of them look very generic. I think Tanukichi looks kind of generic for a main character, but that's kind of the typical thing when anime sometimes, so I really can't fault that. But he does. I think he's probably one of the weaker looking characters because he's so generic and kind of just normal um I, I but at to a point though i think that kind of works in his favor so i can't really deduct any points nor will i because the whole show kind of revolves around him as a protagonist and he does try to sound normal and try to act normal at the beginning so that's kind of understandable overall <clears throat> i love this show i i really really did love this show i watched this all in one shot so i watched all 13 episodes i binged it uh in one sitting which I haven't done, by the way, for an anime in a while, just kind of in retrospect. I watched another show uh, not that long ago. I watched like nine episodes of it, but I didn't watch the whole thing because I'd watched three episodes prior to that. But still, I watched all 12 episodes of this. This, this is 12 episodes. Um, is there going to be any more besides the 12 episodes? I'm not 100% sure. I mean, the light novel series, from what I'm looking at, finished in 2016, February. So you never know. Maybe we can get an OVA or some sort, maybe something like that. But I highly doubt it because this finished uh, like a year ago, 2015, uh, September. So, yeah, but it does end on a note that I was comfortable with and I was okay with. So that's pretty cool. So I really enjoyed that. I think the, I think what's very interesting about the show, I'll just kind of end this whole review type thing. Is episode 11 is kind of what I believe is like the actual ending. And then episode 12 is almost the OVA in many ways. But even though the show doesn't say that. And nor is it like conveyed that it's an OVA. But I feel like episode 12 is an OVA more so episode 11 is the conclusion. Because of how they end it. And I think the ending really was really nice for the show. And I really enjoyed it highly. 
Anyways, guys and girls, if I had to review this between an A through F, solid A minus. I love this show. I thought it was great. Um, you know, it's it, definitely not for those who are younger, of course, like I said in my warning thing. But if you're still watching this and you're watching this in general or you wanted to kind of watch this and you'd be curious about it, just know they do say a lot of shit that's really fucked up. There's some very questionable things that happen, some very questionable characters. I'll tell you that right now. But overall, I highly enjoyed it. I think you guys will, too, if you're over the age. So anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. As always, if you did enjoy this review, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video. You know the whole nine. Until our paths cross again in the next review, everyone, have a great day. Bye-bye.